So we begin our journey by clicking on the import data button in QuickBooks, and then we'll bring in the bank data option. From here, we'll have the ability to manually upload, and that will mean that we need to select the CSV file after we choose the selector. From there, we want to map our account, and QuickBooks will let us choose which account that we're going to pair it up with. Then we'll have the ability to select how many columns show amounts. So that's very important in your CSV file. And you can look at these in Excel. Um, the ability you'll see that you either have one column with the amounts, and that has negative amounts and positive amounts. Negative amounts are going to be your expenses. Positive amounts are going to be your your money in uh, for like bank deposits. Now on a credit card, it, it also would be like credits where credit card payments would show up as a, a positive sign there. Um, and then we would have the ability to to map it. So let me share with you a demo on how to do this. All right, first we begin by clicking on the gear icon, then selecting the import data. From here, we'll click on bank data, and then we'll select a CSV file format under the manual uploads. And from here, I'm gonna pair it up with a CSV file, checking 9772. Then I'll select the account that it goes with here, then continue. And then it's asking us some questions here, such as does the first row contain a header? Yes, it does. How many columns? So in this case, I have two columns, so I'll click two columns. And then I need to select the date format. So you might need to look at the Excel spreadsheet first before you can go with this here. Now down below, we map it so that our date gets mapped properly here. Our description, you can only have one description here, one column of description here. And then for the amount, we'll have um, money received, which in this case, deposit and money spent payments here. So that's it. I hit continue. I'll, with a CSV file, you do have the ability to see them. That's unlike Unlike a QBO file, it just automatically just uploads immediately. But CSV files, you do have a chance to just see if everything is looking good here. If you got to this stage here and you saw the wrong dollar amounts, you know, so money in should be positive, money out should be negative. So, you know, just verify uh, that how you have that scenario here. Okay and then just click continue. Are you sure? Yes, 77 transactions, so I'm gonna say yes. Import completed, awesome. So here they are, got my dates, I've got my descriptions, Okay, and from the memo, and then I can see the money spent and the money received here looking good. Let me go ahead and uh, import a credit card transaction into my credit card here, and this is going to be one column this time. So bank data, select files, I've got my credit card, credit card 0381.csv. I'll pair it up to the credit card here. Yes, one column, date format. And in this case, it, it automatically has paired everything up here accordingly. So I'm going to click Continue. I select all of them. I can see my dates are looking good. I can see, in this case, yeah, negative numbers our expenses, so Ubers are looking good. Payments in the credit card is gonna be positive numbers. So when you design your CSV file, you can verify that. And i um, loving it. So click continue, it's 86, all right. Import complete. 
perfect. So I start to see things are looking good here, perfectly here. Now let me go ahead and share with you what those spreadsheets look like here. All right, we're looking at the spreadsheets on the left. We have the checking account that I imported first. You can see how there's two columns. Payments have negative numbers. Our deposits money in has positive numbers here. So that's what I uploaded first. And then on the right, this was the credit card, and this only has one column. And again, just pay attention to negative numbers are your expenses, positive numbers in this case for a credit card would be your payments coming in, or if you had a refund, a credit card refund would also be a positive uh, number as well for that credit. Okay, so now after you've uploaded, what do you do next? Uh, now you can start accepting transactions from these accounts here. So if I needed to uh, analyze, I would want to make sure that um, the these are all brand new ones that don't exist from before because there could be some issues where you've uploaded some manual transactions and then the date that you have selected overlapped what was already in the account. And so if that's the case, you would exclude by clicking on the oldest ones and excluding them. And you could select a variety of them here, exclude them here. Um, the, other, the other reason why it would be that is they've already been reconciled as well. So you certainly don't want to duplicate your transaction record. So you'd have to make sure that you're really up to date with your bank reconciliations. And that is a super important concept here to be reconciling because every month for the credit card, you get a statement and every month for the checking account, you get a bank statement as well. And just want to make sure that as you reconcile each month, you, your accounting software is not missing anything and it doesn't have duplicates as well. So that's what would be the next steps where you would start adding and matching your transactions and then going to the reconciliation process to, to make sure that um, there's no holes in your accounting. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. Just wanted to make a quick announcement that I've got a QuickBooks discount code for you. If you're interested in purchasing a new QuickBooks account, check out the link in the description. It has an opportunity to save 30% off your next 12 months using QuickBooks Online. And secondly, uh, I also want you to consider purchasing Rewind, which is a backup apps program that allows you to safeguard your data. Uh, it's just think of it as insurance. If you ever made a mistake in your QuickBooks, you can go into your Rewind app and undo. Perhaps maybe you deleted something in QuickBooks, you want it to come back. That's what Rewind is all about, plus being able to restore to a previous time after you've connected it. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you on the next video.